In this video, I'm going to address a question about the origins of human language and as to whether humans are the only species who can speak or who have a language. Well, this is a controversial question because there is no clear-cut answer. In fact, I could, when I went through the literature, I could identify two different schools of thoughts about the language. On the one hand, one school of thought, which is adhered to by people like Noam Chomsky, uh, Ian Tedersal, and those who believe that humans are the only species who can speak language, uh, well, they believe that humans are the only species. That means that humans are unique in terms of the ability to speak uh, and to articulate their thoughts. Uh, I think I, I need to give you a little bit of a background about this perspective. So this school of thought also uh, agrees that um, the ancestors of Homo sapiens stepped outside of Africa around 200,000 years ago. Uh, that's probably, you know, an estimate. Uh, we're not sure how accurate it is, but currently the fossils that have been recovered in archaeological digs um, tell us that story. Now, around uh, some, somewhere between 80 to 70,000 years ago, something happened some kind of mutation, according to Noam Chomsky and especially uh, Jan uh, Tedrasal, something like a mutation, which was minor, but had a very significant and big impact on history, on the history of humanity and also all other species around us. We don't know what that was, but uh, Tedrasal refers to it as an event of event or the event or events, uh, something that shaped us, that shaped our brains and our thinking, our thought processes the way that it is today. So apparently that made us uh, different from Homo sapiens or humans who had lived before us, that's our ancestors. Even though the Homo sapiens who had lived before us were kind of anatomically similar or the same as us, that little change, which is actually a mystery, uh, differentiated us from the rest of our ancestors. Now, uh, how do we know this? Basically, this is a speculation, and it's based on, based on some of the artifacts and uh, tools that have been recovered. These artifacts are indicators of symbolic thinking. When and when you have symbolic thinking, you would have the ability to produce language. And not only that, but also to understand uh, symbolic productions of anyone else around you. So that means that whatever that genetic mutation was, it provided us with the ability to produce symbolic language or symbolic way of communication as well as to be able to understand the symbolic messages that would, that would be produced by other people around us. That's one school of thought. So language is a very, very recent phenomenon which emerged around 70 to 80,000 years ago, and it's only specific to humans. In fact, Noam Chomsky goes on to say that language is in our DNA. We are wired to produce language. He proposes that there are two specific attributes that have differentiated us from other species and have resulted in the production or the emergence of language. One attribute is the DNA uh, attributes of human, which I've already mentioned. The second one, according to him, actually to be more specific, according to Berwick and Chomsky in their uh, rather recent publication, a book called Why Only Us? which is published in 2015. The argument is that the second factor was a kind of general law, which is not human specific, but it's a, it's a law of nature. Their speculation is that it could have been something like a computational efficiency paradigm or something like that. However, both of these factors are pure speculations and really we have no way to uh, verify or investigate how these factors worked hand in hand and allowed humans to start to speak. On the other hand, there is a second school of thought which um, has been proposed by people like uh, Daniel Everett. 
Daniel Everett is a linguist and an anthropologist uh, who investigated the structure of language in some um, Amazonian tribes. Uh, what he proposes is that, uh, unlike Chomsky and people who believe in the theory that Chomsky postulates, is the language was not specific to Homo sapiens. There were other homos uh, in the genus of Homo who were able to speak, who were capable of symbolic thinking. He specifically refers to Homo erectus. And Homo erectus was another species which was anatomically different from humans, but genetically was very similar to humans. Of course, it's a claim that the uh, stature, that's the height and the weight of the, the, this species was much lower, much smaller than humans or Homo sapiens. So the claim here is supported by the recovery of some tools which were produced around two million years ago. In order to be able to create a tool of such a sophistication level, uh, you would need to have some sort of thinking and some communication with other members of your species in order to tell them how to create that tool. The tools are not as simple as the tools that, for example, a chimpanzee would create and then throw away. They need working, they need some kind of um, mental planning in order to be able to start the project and continue and finish it. So this means that there was some kind of thinking in the mind of the species uh, who or which was creating the tool. We don't know what species really created those tools, but the best speculation is that it was most likely Homo erectus. In addition, Daniel Everett um, argues that since Homo erectus, just like Homo sapiens, migrated to many parts of the world and at some point in time dominated in the farthest areas as far as, for example, the Philippines or um, some parts of Europe or even Asia. Uh, and in order to, this, to do this migration successfully, it had to uh, cross some bodies of water, for example, oceans and seas. So then it needed to create boats. Boat making is really a very sophisticated industry, uh, which, uh, based on the only records that we have, which has only been mastered by humans. Not, that's Homo sapiens, not other types of homos. But if this is true, in other words, if Homo, uh, Homo erectus was also able to create boats and use the boats to cross the ocean to go to places as far as the Philippines, then yes, we can say that it, it was also able to, to do some kind of symbolic thinking because you can imagine that in order to create a boat, you would need to communicate with other members of the species and this communication might, might have been through vocal language or even some kind of sign language which they invented. It doesn't have to be vocal, vocal, vocal language or through vocalization. Uh, but if this is true, then language can be dated back to some, somewhere around two million years ago. Now the question is uh, whether another species which is even closer to humans like Homo neanderthalensis also had language or not. Again, we don't know. There is one school of thought that claims that since they were genetically very similar to humans, something as similar as 99.99%, 90, .99%, then it's not impossible for them to have been able to do some symbolic thinking. On the other hand, there are some people who claim and argue that since we have not been able to recover any artifacts or anything that indicates that they were also capable of symbolic thinking, then this hypothesis is weak and lack of evidence basically refutes it. So let's recapitulate briefly. I don't know if I've answered your question, but there is stronger evidence that humans were probably the only species who were able to speak or produce language. This is because we're able to do symbolic thinking. As to whether Homo erectus was also able to think and to produce uh, symbolic behavior, um, we still need more uh, strong evidence in order to support that hypothesis. 
So thank you very much for your attention. If you liked the video, please give it a like and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.